Hey, I'm your host, Lamar L.A. Smith, and welcome to another episode of the Jack of All Trades podcast. Today, I'm with Jillian Rose. She's a singer songwriter who's been in love with music pretty much her whole life, and she's been making music professionally for 10 years. Jillian currently, uh, currently is a student at the Arizona State University and plans to graduate in spring of 2022. That is correct. Hi. Hey, hey. All right. So funny story, right? Mm -hmm. When we talked yesterday, you know, the pre-call was dope and I learned a lot about you. But one thing that you guys didn't know that I'm going to inform you about is that Jillian is basically a music supercomputer. Like I was surprised how much she knew about music, like the depth of it. I'm like, let me let me just pull out an encyclopedia. Like if you <laughs> want to know a little song, song about music, Jillian is the woman that you should go to. I'm telling you. Thank you. That's that's very sweet. I don't know if I'd call myself a music computer. I hope to someday I could be as amazing as that. But I've been um, I've been in a bunch of music activities since I was a very young age. So I've gained some tips and knowledge along the road. So but thank you. Feel that, feel that, feel that. All right. So today we're going to talk about Jillian's time at ASU thus far, you know, just learn more about her journey as a musician. Now I don't know if you get this a lot, but you just have like a super like laid back demeanor. You're like cooling in the other side of the pillow. I don't know if you've always been like that, but I'm just curious, like how was your childhood? Like how was it growing up? Um, I had a very good childhood. So my parents are very supportive, supportive of me, especially in my career. Like ever since I like decided that I wanted to become a singer, they were very supportive, especially my mom. She, even when song, like I would go to a lot of songwriting camps. So, um, she would she would um, help me write them before because I'd be so nervous because I'd be with like all these older kids that have been doing music for so long. And then here I am, little 11 year old, like trying to join the big kid group and I'd be terrified. So she would she would um, sit down with me a few nights before and be like, OK, this is how we're going to do it. And before I had a manager or anything, my mom pretty much like took on that role and she would had a momager. Me. Yeah, <laughs> I had a momager. But she she's great. And my dad is too. He's very proud of me. He will play my songs every single day if he could. He'll be blasting through his office. There was a time where I used to sell like um, DVDs because that was be that was just like when people like had to still like buy music, like on Apple Music and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my parents are very old fashioned. So they bought like a few hundred CDs to like sell. And he would like go out to every single coworker and be like, look, she signed it. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta buy one. Only $4.99, I'll give you a deal. So I had a great, oh, wow. great upbringing, but I guess my like more calm aesthetic as I guess you could say is um, I've always hung out with like a more like mature group, especially in like the music industry. Like I started like writing with people that were way older than me. And so I had to kind of like relate more to them when I was writing songs with them. So it kind of, and my brother's older and I would always hang out with him and his friends or, I don't know, I just feel like I've always been able to understand things that were probably a little bit too old for me to understand. So. I mean, yeah. it may be corny, but you know how they say like age is just a number. So I don't think it's necessarily, you know, bad that you know you just matured you know I guess quicker than the traditional pace that people expect yeah I wouldn't say it's bad at all I've I've loved it for sure I just have always had a sense I don't know my mom even from when I was a young age she said I'm an old soul and um, probably one of my biggest dreams if I could go back in time would be to go to Woodstock so oh, wow. like growing up I was obsessed with like the 60s to 70s era like I would like be a little flower child and um but yeah I think it I think being a little bit more mature for my age has helped me um widely 
in professional level, not only just like friendship levels too, because I think I'm more patient with people mm-hmm. than um, most people that um, act very, um, I guess, boldly with their emotions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it can be a little hostile. Like I have that personality. I'm a very bold personality, but I, I have a way of like being able to like tone it down if I need to. But it being like a little bit more mature and like being able to see other like artists and stuff has really helped me for sure. Especially no, I, when writing, especially when writing. I can I can I can definitely feel that. I think I think what you said about patience, that's definitely something that people really don't it's something that has to be practiced because no one is just going to be naturally patient like all the time like there's gonna be times where you're super patient when you're not patient and I think that patience is very important like you say when you're cultivating relationships with people uh whether it be professional or just a regular interpersonal relationship because sometimes you're gonna have your ups and downs and it takes the patience to know that okay we're just going to work through this so we're going to figure out what we need to figure out about anything you know that's going on yeah, I definitely agree. So with college, what made you pick ASU? Well, that's a funny story because I actually didn't want to go to it for a little bit. I am mm-hmm. such a California girl, born and raised there, same house my whole life. And oh, I love the beach. Something about water brings me to a type of like serenity that like I can't under explain. I can't explain or like, or understand, but like it was hard for me to just like pick up my things and leave. I've always been like a very independent person. So it wasn't being alone that scared me. It was just the lifestyle that I was going to really miss. And I had really amazing friends in high school that I had such a strong bond with that I kind of told you about yesterday, but I didn't want to leave them because I've had like a set friend group. I've had like two friend groups, like my whole life that like were always so stable. And I didn't want to like leave them so I wanted to go to like community college at first because not only did I not really know what I wanted to do besides music I didn't know like what major I wanted to do so it was um kind of an argument a little bit with me and my parents because they knew I should go here because especially since like my parents wanted to give me like the full college experience Mm -hmm. because um my mom wasn't able to do that so she really wanted that for me she wanted me to do the whole sorority thing. And that was not me at all. I'm not a very like preppy girl at all, but I did it. And I'm so glad that I did it all. I've made some of my most amazing friends coming to college and through the sorority as well. Um, so what are you in? I was in Alpha Phi. Uh, yeah. Hold on, was, hold on. Are you still in it or like? I'm, I'm not in it anymore. Uh, you dropped, it just was too much. Yeah. Yeah, COVID and it just wasn't colliding well for me. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. So what do you major in then? Um, I'm majoring in communications and I'm getting um, a degree in marketing as well. Okay, okay. How do you plan to like use that, you know, with music? Cause I know that's you know, your mm-hmm. real passion. Yeah, so at first when I came to college, I had no idea what I wanted my major to be. Cause like the only interest that I've ever really had that I could say full heartedly was singing. And I didn't want to be a singing major because I've taken some classes. Like I taught myself um, the piano with a few classes and had a few guitar classes, but definitely need to take more of those. Um, But the reason I chose communications is because um, if I am going to be a type of musician communicating is a huge huge aspect of it because then I'd be putting myself in positions like even talking to you like if I am not a great communicator it'd be hard for me and like when I write music I like to have like a good understanding of how I want my song to be articulated um and also it it is such a broad major that I can do so many different things with it so I can do the marketing field or I could do um like relationships and some other type of business. So it, it's not only just like a good like backbone and security blanket for me to have, like say if the music does not work for me, I can, st- I still have something like 
in my back pocket to be like, hey, I'm still good in this, this, and this, and I can move forward with that. But it also opens up other doors for me to if I wanted to continue with like my communication and marketing path alongside music, I could do something business related that helps maybe young artists like myself market themselves or um, in some type of way like that. But, but yeah. <laughs> no, I feel that, I feel that, I feel that. That, makes, that makes a lot of sense as far as that. So obviously you said that you've been in love with music like forever. Mm -hmm. but who like helped you like cultivate that love for music was there like particular person or like how did that happen um I've always liked the feeling of singing like even like before I knew that I could possibly even be good at it I, I would be singing songs like my mom would say like even when like certain tv shows would come on I would I would sing the whole time even even if I'm like way too young to comprehend like what even the words are meaning, like I would want to sing along to it. And I didn't really understand that it was like a talent of mine that I actually like had a good voice until um, eighth grade, there was like this play and we, <laughs> we all got like little solos because like everyone wants to see their kid, like do a little solo, like, I just remember like all the kids being so shy and like you couldn't really hear them. And then when it was my turn, I was like, I don't know why I was so shy. Like, this is fun. And then I just like, I owned it and I did good. And then everyone was just like, oh, wow. Like she can actually sing. And one of the parents that was in the audience, um, his daughter was also in my class and in the play, he came up to me and my parents after and said, wow, Jillian's really got some pipes. Like I've been looking <laughs> for someone to sing the national anthem to open it up to open up the girls little league softball team would would she be interested in doing that just sing the national anthem and we let's get the season started type of thing and my parents talked to me about it and without a hesitation I was like yeah and they're like are you sure like there's going to be a lot of people there like it's not going to be <laughs> like like a little like parent teacher maybe 40 50 people in the room like there's going to be a few hundred people because it's like 30 different softball teams and there's like 30 girls on each. okay that probably wasn't 30 softball teams I would say in the teens though they're in, in the teens maybe like I don't know maybe like 15 and then a like decent amount of people yeah there's a decent amount of people because then everyone wants to see their like their little teams. girls come by in with like their cute little outfits and their pigtails throwing confetti so it was a big deal for me and my mom my mom was definitely more nervous than I was, I think, because I think um, she thought I was going to get really shy and just not be able to do it because I wasn't, she didn't think I like comprehended like how big it was going to be. And she was right. I didn't, I didn't really comprehend like the nerves that I was going to feel. So I went to my choir school teacher um, um, and she sat down with me and gave me lessons on how to present myself when I'm singing to a crowd. And I still use those tips today. Like if I'm singing to an audience, like I have to look at each certain type of people and I fidget a lot with my hands when I'm nervous. But, and so she would tell me to like play with the seam of my pants, but I don't do that because I, I speak and I sing with my hands so much that yeah. now it's came to the point where I don't know what I'm doing with my body when I'm singing. I so, I'm so locked in because I'm telling a story that I have no idea how I'm standing what my hands are doing. And it also, honestly shouldn't matter because yeah. I want people to hear what I'm saying more than like focus like on, on what you don't. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that would probably be the biggest turning point for me that started that career or like dream that I wanted. Cause I just remember the feeling of how like great I felt after like the child was, the crowd was like cheering and my brother, who's four years older than me, he like ran up and brought me flowers, which was so sweet. And then I just started singing a national anthem for any places that needed singers. Mm -hmm. And then my mom found um, OC Hit Factory, which is who I used to sing with. And then that's when I went to my first songwriting camp. And knew that mm -hmm. once I went to my first songwriting camp, that's when I really knew that like, okay, I can do more than just like, sing a random song like I can write songs 
it was hard, especially for an 11 year old. It was very hard. We had three days to write a song. And we get like put <laughs> group, yeah, three days. Which is like easy for me now. If I, got, if I had three days to write a song, I could probably write three. If I like sat down and made myself do it with like my producer and my manager, we'd be able to, we've done that before. Oh my gosh, that was crazy three days. But yeah, that was a lot for me, but I knew it was, it was fun. So. You, young Jillian was really pushing the envelope. I could, I could see it now. Like I could vision the crowd and like, oh my God, Jillian, like you're so good. Like I could, yeah. I could, I could just see it now, you know, with the big smile on your face, you built in and out with your expressive yeah. hands. But, uh, <laughs> it's great was, so, so the songwriting camp was like when you knew that, okay, I want to pursue like music. Like it was more of like a realization for me that I could do more hmm. and that I had like, like I had opportunities to do more with my talent. So like, instead, because I was just so used to like doing little gigs here and there, like just singing like the national anthem for play for like opening places. But that was like the turning, they were two turning points, but this is like the second turning point that opened up my mind to like what else I could do with this singing talent. Because that's all I had really known before is just how to sing in like the elementary school choir and like do a little performances here and there. So that made me like really like to record music. So then I started doing weekly recordings um, with my producer at the time. Um, with that company and then I started getting comfortable with singing into um, like the set microphone and like um, headphones and like a recording booth instead of just like a normal like normal mic microphone, normal <laughs> microphone. Yeah, yeah. yeah so then yeah, that was sense. fun I did that for like four or more years just like all the time recording songs, but it wasn't like always my songs. Mo the majority would be cover songs because I would do it like every other week. And I'm also still like in school. So school, I would like, what time do you got to write a song? And yeah, like you said, like at that time you weren't like, you didn't have enough, you know, training and writing songs where you could just like, oh, write a song right there. And you're like exactly. two hours that you chilling after you've done your homework at night. <laughs> exactly. I had no idea how to do it on my own. I Back then it was like you were given a set backing track and you had this amount of time to create a melody and lyrics, which was easy. It's great. That's like what you should do if you're a learning um, songwriter because it, it like, it's like giving um, a prompt to students. Like it, it gives yeah, you like the setup up for you to figure out how it's supposed to be like and then once you like know what you like and what type of style you like, then you can start creating your own backing tracks. Or if you're um, talented with instruments, you can make your own. Or you meet other people that are good at playing. So, but yeah, like you said, I, I was not able to do it by myself. So <laughs> I did a lot of um, cover songs, which were still cool to like show people. It's not like I, had a lot of promoting myself last like not last year but that time frame because I was so young and it was just me and my mom she didn't know how to like market me and nor did I um so it was kind of challenging for a while well, so I don't even think so oh my bad I'm sorry to cut you off I was just about no, to say I don't even think social media was popping like that either you know what I'm saying because it wasn't it wasn't at all like I didn't I don't think I got an Instagram until I was like 14, 15. And by that time, that's when I was starting to write my first album. Came out with that when I was 15, freshman in high school. And that was huge for me because that was like my first thing that was like, wow, this is, this is like, I'm, I did this. I got five songs. I'm releasing it. And it was cool to be like, okay, like, I'm not just like the SoundCloud rapper, you know, like I'm putting it out on iTunes, like I'm serious about it. And I made a music video and everything. And it wasn't cheap either. It was, it definitely was very expensive the way that um, I went about doing it. Um, but, and I think after that album came out, that's kind of really when I started to like, be like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Because hmm. it was so discouraging for me 
because no one really liked the songs. And if you you did, it was, I don't know, people weren't listening to it enough. And like I had spent so much time and money into it. And it was just kind of like, oh, cool. Like you have it, but like it wasn't, it didn't go anywhere. And I don't know. And so it just really discouraged me for a long time. It wasn't until like two years ago where I picked it back up again wholeheartedly. Hmm. So, so, wow, it's just so much. I'm like, I had this question, I had that question. I'm like, she pretty much answered it, but then she didn't answer something else that I want to know. It's like, my whole mind is like racing right now. But, Sorry, I'll uh, slow down. I no, think no, I'm you're good. You're myself. good. I love like for everything to be organic. I'm, I'm My job is just to set you up, you know, throw the ball yeah. down the middle and you supposed to hit it over to y'all. Like it's a home run derby. Like yeah. this, is, this is your show. <laughs> Like this is my show, but like you're the you're the guest. I'm throwing it down the middle. Mm-hmm. You know, you about to get it over the over the fence. Right. But uh, essentially, so how did like how did your music career start? Like how did this new path start for you? If that self doubt kicked in after you know album one. Yeah. So during that first time that like I kind of let it go, I was still involved in other like singing activities so I was still in my honors chorus in high school and I was doing really well in it I was the president of it for a little bit and I loved what I did so I still had that singing part of me so I didn't feel gone yet even though I wasn't doing like all my recording sessions I still had that like part of me and I would do like auditions it's like I was asked to audition for the voice um I did that a few times and so I I wasn't completely out of touch with music until I graduated from high school, came to ASU, and then it was just no more, no more musical Jill. I was just thrown into this new area, new friends. Um, I had to figure out how to get me back, but still Mm -hmm. like in a way where like, I'm experiencing new things and like becoming, because when you go away to college, like you're you're becoming a new you because you're yeah. growing up. you're doing everything on your own. You got to make new friends and you got to, you got to take what your parents taught you and just run with it. And I was caught up in like my classes and making new friends and the sorority life and just something felt missing. And I wasn't sure like what it really was, but I, because I knew I missed my home and I missed the beach and I missed my friends. But like, even when I went home and visited them, just something about me just like was empty. And then I realized like, I need, I need to do something musically. And so then I went, I started doing like piano classes and like trying to help that, but I wasn't like singing. I was doing, I was learning how to play piano. So that was fun. And I liked using my artistic side in in some type of way that definitely did help me but there's like many realizations where I was like if I don't have this like I will be depressed I can't not do it it was my out for me like many people have a way of like expressing themselves and they do it it's like it was my outlet for sure so like I needed to get back into that and I don't know if you're religious or not but I prayed about it a lot and I was just like I just need I just need help I need someone to, to get me there. I need, I need some type of push because I, I didn't know where to go from there. I had no experience in marketing. I had no recording stuff and I, I didn't have the budget to pay as much as I was paying for before with all those recording lessons. And so I, I just felt very stuck. Mm-hmm. And so one day I, um, there, there's this restaurant that I work at in California. It's called Wind and Sea been working there for a while I still work there when I go home but one of my co-workers his name is Trevor he approached me and he was like you sing right and I was like yeah he was like okay well I am learning to be a manager and I'm like studying like music production and all this stuff so I and like there's this restaurant that I'm going to be working at and we need like some singers to do gigs and stuff so I was wondering if you wanted to sing at the, this restaurant and if you're not working with anyone like I could manage you and okay okay, okay. it was just like this just <laughs> not 
just get planted in my lap, like out of nowhere. Yeah. And he's still my manager to this day. He's, he's so supportive. He definitely like makes me be like, okay, you, you need to get on your shit. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. And he definitely was the encouragement push that I asked for. And he's been so amazing. So then we, he was like, we need to write a song first. And I was like, oh my God, I haven't written a song since I was like 15. I don't even know if I remember how to do it. Like, yeah, I've written poetry before, but like not, not in a way. Yeah. So I was kind of freaked out and he was like, we need to write like a few songs and then we'll just like practice a bunch of your cover songs for the set that we're going to do at the restaurant. Because one of our friends was going to like take over the restaurant. So then we worked all that summer on memorizing like 10 songs. So I had all of those 10 songs memorized so that I could perform them. And um, a few originals that I added in. And we only wrote like one. We, and we kind of started the other one, but we only like finished one. And then it was time for me to like go back to school. So then... I was going into my sophomore year of college. I came out with that one song and everyone was like, oh my God, like, (laughs) what? Like, you actually like make songs? Cause like, I would tell people like, yeah, I make songs, but then they look on Spotify and And like, I don't see none. 15 and it's like little girly songs or like that, the songs that you would write when you're like that age. And it's like, not me at all at this point in my life or what I like say or like, want to express at this point in my life so then I kind of stopped like talking about it so then it was kind of a shock to all like my friends and like my followers like okay like I'm doing this again it wasn't the best song it's probably not my favorite but it was it was a, my third turning point so then after that that's when we met or I didn't meet and my producer Trevor met Patrick because they were in an internship together for yeah. a music production and he's been my producer on Strangers, my whole EP, and this new song that's coming out in a month or so. And he's absolutely amazing. He was the one I was telling you about before that is, has a lot of knowledge on, on not only music and music production and like, and making tracks, but he's also like just an overall well-rounded musician. And he's the one that like really gave me the tips. I'm like, okay, you're using the wrong part of your throat. Or like, if you need to hit this note, like pinch your nose or something, (laughs) you know, he does stuff like that. And so if I am taking credit for a lot of um, my music knowledge, I I have to give him credit as well. Okay, okay. I I love that. I mean, I think the the most beautiful thing that you said about all that is, you know, that everything kind of like went in alignment, right? So Mm -hmm. I forget. I hope I'm not butchering this quote, but I heard it at work like two or three days ago. And the quote was, you know, work like it depends on you and pray like it depends on God. So like the fact that, you know, you were putting in the work and like you were praying about it and you were like manifesting it as well. And the fact that, you know, God put things in place that, okay, Jillian, here's the opportunity that you needed. Here's, you know, the moment that you needed. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you were able to take advantage of that, you know, and have these two, you know, great guys in your life that are helping you, you know, build what you're trying to build is amazing. You know, you you just got to know when to, like I said, take advantage of those opportunities. And I'm glad that you did take advantage of them. Yeah, I'm so glad I did, too. It, it definitely changed my life, for sure. So. Oh, I never God. get gushy at them. So if they ever hear this, it's going to be like, oh, my God, stop. <laughs> Couldn't be like Jillian. I was like, they're going to be like, she's so, like, suave and cool. Like, where is this emotion coming from? Like, <laughs> she, They do not think I'm suave and cool. We spend, like, 12 hours in a room together. They probably <laughs> think I'm psychotic. I know they think I'm psychotic. They've told me. But... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only person that thinks you're cool. I don't know. But maybe if you're alone with me for a long period of time, my weirdness might come out. But I don't think I'm not weird. I just get fun. It's, it's cool. It's cool. You know, being uh, plain Jane, so to speak, is is no, it's outdated. It's weird. Yeah. Weird is the new cool. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All right. So what challenges have you faced, you know, trying to juggle 
school and you know your music career and just like even when at first when you were in your sorority like all of that together like how did you manage all of that um it was difficult it it, it still is difficult because i i feel like i have to like figure out like how much of my time i can put into certain things like school is like a priority because i do need to do good in school like i need to make sure that I keep my scholarship and everything. And I also like still wanna like keep my social life, keep my friends while trying to pursue my music. And I wanna put as much as into my music as I possibly can. So there's been some sacrifices that I've had to make here and there, especially more in high school. I was doing so many things in high school because I was on the track team, soccer team, the choir, which was all year round and recording music. And I was doing modeling back then too. So oh, I was, I had, yeah. So I had no time for me at all. Um, well, all of it was me time, but like, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm doing so much, but I, I, it was hard to just kind of like really calm down and yeah, I, I had to take a lot of sacrifices here and there, but I'm proud that I did all those things because it's made me who I am today. And it's like really um, brought an opening to my eyes of like what I can do and what I should work harder for. So like, I loved being like athletic and like I loved like soccer and track and mostly soccer track was, that killed me. But (laughs) I knew that, that that's something that like, I wasn't going to pursue what I was going to pursue was my music so like even though like I had to be at like like a lot of like soccer practices and and games and meets for track and stuff I still wanted to like make sure I was giving my music career like the same amount of effort and time because I knew that was going to stick with me longer no I I feel that I feel that I feel that I'm not sure if I answer your question but I mean not really more so answer (laughs) like how did you manage it in like high school but I mean I guess what I took from that at least like I guess the the listeners don't know if I'm right or wrong or you gonna tell me that but uh essentially you know you just had you just understand that in order to get to where you want to be with your music that at certain points and you know regardless of what day it is what week it is you have to sacrifice different little things that you may want to do to do what you have to do in order to you know keep moving that needle forward with your music yeah Def- yeah that's what i was trying to say like there's a there's a piece of there's a pie and the pie yes. is in my time and i have to section off like what i have to do what i want to do and what i need to work towards so I, I always have to kind of hmm, that's make a, interactions. That's a, that's a good way to, to describe, you know, the time element of that for sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. So you're graduating soon. I know like college goes by super quick. Like you mm-hmm. wake up one day, you're a freshman. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, like I'm about to graduate. Mm-hmm. So what, what are your plans like for after college? I don't know if you thought that far yet, but yeah, like what are your current plans? Yeah, I'm not completely sure like a, a set plan. I guess it just depends for me like where I get a job right away because I can go home, but I love being independent. So I want to get my own place at home and California is pretty expensive, um, but I, it's definitely between staying here in Arizona and going home. I might stay out here for another year and just um, make some money so I can afford to go back and move home um, while like my rent is a little bit (laughs) cheaper. Um, But I definitely do see myself like living in California after college. And plus it's right by, like I live in like Orange County, which is right by LA. There's, There's a lot of people there making music obviously. And uh, it's just a good spot for me, especially like I said, like I love like the beach area. It's, it's got a big place in my heart for sure. I can, I can see from like 
looking at your stories and like a lot of your pictures, I'm like beach, 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 beach. I'm like, <laughs> I think that God made her, you know, born in the right part of Cali with Laguna. Like, yeah, just ooh, some something <laughs> about the beach and you like, yeah, it's different. It's different. All right, so we've talked about a lot of stuff and. I'm glad that we've got to touch on, you know, your music, school, everything in between. But this is my favorite part of every episode when I get to play a game with the guests before I wrap everything up. All right. Today, we're going to play a classic of mine, This or That, the Jillian Rose edition. Okay, I'm ready for it. All right. So the first This or That. Greece or Kala? Greece. Ooh, okay. Punk rock or classical music? Punk rock. Ooh, that punk rock phase you told me about must have been hitting difference. Yeah, it let a certain part out of me that I needed. Sometimes I still put on like my punk rock and just go for it. <laughs> Depends on how punk it is, though. I've never been a fan of screamo. Okay, okay, okay. Jillian's a head banger. If fun fact, head banger. Yep. Yep. All right. Tempe or Laguna Beach? Laguna. Yeah, I I knew that was gonna happen before I even asked it. Yeah. Halloween or Christmas? Hmm. I'd say Christmas. I love Halloween because I love like how spooky everything yeah. gets and like the the energy that it brings people and dressing up is fun too. Yeah, but I agree. something about Christmas like. Everyone's just so happy and loving. It's not even like the fact about like, oh, we get presents. Like it, uh, that doesn't even matter. Like just the whole holiday feel goes on for like probably like a month and a half. Cause like right after like Thanksgiving, everyone's just like, yay, Christmas time. And I don't know. I definitely yeah. love it. I, I, I would agree. Like it's definitely a huge like family vibe. It always feel, feels to it. Definitely. All right. A night out with your girls or stay at home movie night? Night out with my girls. Okay, okay. Chicken or shrimp? Mm. It depends on what I'm having. I love shrimp, mm. but I also eat a lot of chicken. But I'm going to say shrimp. I love shrimp. Okay, okay. Surfing or snowboarding? Mm. I'm better at snowboarding. I'm okay at surfing, but I'd probably say snowboarding, even though I love the beach, I have just taken a lot of hits in some waves and in snowboarding too. That's a hard, that's probably your hardest one, <laughs> but probably snowboarding. I guess, I guess it hits a little bit harder because like you're better at it. So it's a little bit more fun as a result. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel that. I feel that. Concerts or raves? Ooh, okay, so like a like a just like one. There's a regular like you know regular concert, concert like, and then a rave being like a festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rave festival for sure. Those have been like the most amazing experiences for me and my friends. Like so much fun. I think we talked about that yesterday, right? We may have. I don't. I don't remember. I do remember the Greece and like Cabo conversations, but yeah. that's a totally different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Elton John or John Lennon? That's really hard. John or John? I know I did it on purpose. They're both spectacular in their own ways. Um, that's hard. I'd probably say Elton John just because he was such, such like a powerful person himself. And he, but I do love Beatles. I'll, I'm just going to stick with Elton John. I'll, I'll stick with Elton John. But John Lennon. I, I don't blame you. Like, both are iconic, but me, yeah. I don't know. I just listened to more Elton John, and I mm -hmm. guess I got the idea. I'm not going to lie. I, I looked up, like, you know, artists, and I was thinking about who I could put against two, two, ugh, put against one another. And Rocket Man, I love that movie. I was, yeah. Uh, like, that was a great movie. It made me, it made me like his music, like, even more than I already did. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. I know I gave you a couple hard ones recently, but I think this one is going to be the hardest one. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. Which it. song do you like better? With you 
or over you again? They both mean such different meanings in the song. Over You Again was written about one of my closest friends here who was in this toxic relationship with this boy. And with you holds an even deeper and greater meaning. Um, I actually just came out with a music video um, for it. And I made a TikTok on the meaning as well. But it really means like being so thankful for this one person or like this one feeling that brought you like out of this like dark place into becoming who you are. And like, if it wasn't for that person or that moment, whether it's like your family, your sibling, God, if you're religious, or even just like some random male, male guy that always like was nice to you and smiled at you and said hi, like certain little things like that, that like made you like overcome something that was really weighing down on you. Um, so with you it holds a deeper, deeper meaning. And like, I hold that one like so dear to me, but it is a little bit of a slower song. Um, Over You Against was fun. It was more fun to make because it was just like, I was trying to go for like that kind of like over you again, like kind of just like yeah, I ain't anger, I but like with the pop, but <sighs> I know you. I know you recently switched to the over you again side. Yes, start with the with you. I guess if I was just doing my everyday listening, I would go to over you again because it's kind of it's like more like empower empowering. It's just kind of like ah, oh, forget you. Like you're annoying. Like I'm over you. And then with you, like sometimes like I need like those sad songs to make me feel like grateful or like at ease I don't know I guess over you again <laughs> I knew it was gonna be hard it's like you know yeah. a mother picking between her two kids yeah. <laughs> like completely different kids yeah it's completely different kids but <laughs> you already gave away like the the secret but yes I ain't gonna lie when I first listened to over you again I was like because I already listened to with you told you about that you know that's how we connected I was like oh my god like it just like hit my soul I thought I almost shed a tear like towards the end you hit that one note I was like oh my god <laughs> like you know in the moment when you just hear something it just hits you different yeah. like I, I, my emotions are a little bit better now when I listen to it. but in like that first time I was like Whew. yeah Good, good. That's that's always my goal. I want I want people to have that same feeling because I have that feeling when I'm doing it. But then when I hear it back, like it's like, oh my god, I did that. <laughs> and fun fact, her with you music video is it evolves the beach. So she yeah. loves the beach, the beach and her like best friends, SpongeBob and Patrick type level, like mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, yep, SpongeBob and Patrick. <laughs> All right, that is all we have for this episode of the Jack of All Trades pod. Make sure you listen to this episode on Anchor, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you also subscribe to my Inside 380 YouTube channel where I post the full videos, any clips, etc. Make sure you get my baby, Jack of All Trades, Rise of a Party Promoter, Amazon Kobo, wherever you need to find a book, just you know, Google it. And I'm gonna put, you know, Jillian's info in the bio as well. And make sure you also follow me at Jack Onovan on Twitter and Instagram. I don't know why I almost forgot about that, but <laughs> LA out. All right, LA out.